Another material property I want to talk, touch briefly on is fatigue strength. Now you can do about a two-day seminar on fatigue, so I'm going to try to cram this into three slides, so we'll see how that goes. But when you're measuring fatigue of a material, you take a small sample, uh, cut a little uh, beam out of it, clamp it at one end, deflect it a certain amount to a given stress level, then let it come back to zero, then bend it again, and so on. So essentially, you're taking this material and you're wiggling it back and forth until it breaks. There are a couple ways you can do a fatigue test. One is the, what we call the unidirectional test, where you take the sample, bend it up, let it come back to zero stress, and keep repeating that cycle. And then there's the more severe case, where you would take it, bend it up to maximum stress level, and bend it back down to an equal and opposite stress level in the other way. So you have a much quicker failure. So you load these up in the machines, you let them run, and you uh, count the number of cycles it takes until the sample breaks. And then you uh, plot those data points on a, what's called an SN curve, or number of cycles to failure versus stress level. And then uh, you repeat this at different stress levels until you get a nice plot like this. Now this is 17410 strip. This is a low strength, high conductivity copper beryllium. It would not be used in bits applications, but uh, I chose it because they have a lot of data on it. It can really illustrate this point very well. What you'll notice is that there is a lot of scatter in fatigue data. So if you want to know how long is your contact going to last at a given stress level, you've got to do some statistical analysis of this uh, fatigue data. And what you do in that case is look at all the different uh, failure rates at, uh, at each stress level. So for example, these five data points here. Then you perform a statistical analysis on it. In this case, we use a two-parameter Weibull model. And you can determine you know, at, you know, what failure rate you're going to have at a given stress level. So at uh, maybe 1% failure rate you have you know, here, 2% failure rate, et cetera. So then you connect all these points together, and you can get a nice statistically relevant curve. So this blue line here, that would be your 50% failure rate, the red line 10%. The orange line, 1%. So if you're going to do a fa fatigue analysis and try to predict how many cycles your contacts are going to last, you're going to have to look at the maximum stress generated in that contact and then compare that to the appropriate failure rate. I assume in most cases you probably want to use like the Six Sigma failure rate, so 3.4 parts per million. And just to make that prediction, there are a couple things you can do. The quick and easy way is to uh, take the maximum first principle tensile stress anywhere on your contact and compare that to the uh, desired fatigue curve. Now, this, no fatigue ever happened in uh, compression, so first principle tensile stress would be the appropriate stress level to use. The other thing you could do, which should be a little bit more accurate but takes a little bit more computation time, is actually run a finite element analysis using a fatigue simulating package. This is a quick comparison of the fatigue properties of those materials I showed you earlier. Again, steel and copper beryllium are the best, where the aluminum and brass tend to fail much more early at lower stress levels. 